Hi, everyone. This is Allison Ramsey with the Empire Life Podcast, where we interview entrepreneurs from all around the world that are launching their online empires and having super successful businesses and helping others to up level with their personal gifts and desires. And today we are with Marcy Locke. She is a mentor. She, <laughs> she is the founder of, of a bunch of different successful online programs, and she helps also personally up-level entrepreneurs from all around the world in their success in building their inner and outer empires. So I'll hand it over to Marcy to talk a little bit more about herself. Sure. Well, what do you want to know? <laughs> I'm like, ask me a question and I'll share anything. I want to know how do you use your, like your inner core desires? How do you use your desires to really help like create a win-win with your personal clients and yourself, how do you use those to up level? Like what are some of your core desires and your strengths? And then how do you use those to up level with yourself and your clients? Okay. Well, I'd say probably if I summed up what I'm here to do is I'm here to liberate people. Like liberation would be a one word of, of saying, and liberating myself, obviously we get to liberate ourselves and that's part of like building the inner empire, right? Like you can't create anything without that you don't have within. So everything, your world without is from your world within. So part of it is when you look at, when you say your desires, a lot of us, like what actually is, uh, you know, in our path, our journey, what becomes your greatest strengths was actually your core wounds. So it's like our, our core wounds become our greatest core strengths. So most likely all the people that you're working with and, and the people that are like stepping up and being like, yeah, you know what? I, like I figured out, I had this mess and it became my message. I had this thing that I was afraid of and I had to learn how to overcome it to become the thing that I understood and I got myself to freedom. And that's what I'm here to share. So, I mean, really for me, my, my, my gift is, is, uh, my genius and my gifts has really been able to see the internal game, like see all the disconnects. I see the unseen. I see the micro to the macro alignment. I'm really just aligning people on how they're operating from, you know, their, their thought patterns, like their beliefs, their programming, which is all, you know, pre seven years old is when we take all that on to our perceptions, the, 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 the conscious languaging that we're using our feeling center. When all that's in alignment, it's like we manifest with ease because we're divine, powerful creators. But when we're in like our human brain and we're like I want this but I don't think I'm enough and I don't know what if this happens and oh no and we're we're putting out different frequencies and vibrations it's like uh okay you just get what you believe deep down which is your programming so I would say you know the journey I've been on of learning to love myself whole and complete uh fully be unapologetically expressed as me standing in the truth of who I am knowing like I trust the process of life and I'm just here as this like I'm I'm, I'm worthy of receiving and having it all, that's become my, how I live. That's my desire to teach other people to have the same. So it, it's really learning where there's gaps and disconnects from that. You know, you know, you and I were talking about earlier, like, you know, I started giving people a little bit of context. Um, you know, I was raised on a farm, very poor, a lot of poverty consciousness. I had tons of sicknesses and diseases from the time I was little because I saw my dad sick. My dad passed away when I was 15. So I had everything from a heart attack at 19 to I had breast cancer. I had migraines. I had ulcers. I had all these crazy sicknesses. I was raised in a really strict religious environment that was like, you have to act a certain way, be a certain way, don't be heard, don't be seen, you know, do what only God wants you to do. And I was just raised in fear. Like the world was scary and people were going to attack you. So I attacked, I, I attracted rape attempts, kidnappers, a stalker when I was little, you know, I had the craziest sicknesses from all these things. And I literally was a scared little girl that didn't dare be seen or heard. I was afraid of rejection. I was, and now I live in this unapologetic, like whatever the fuck I want to say is me just fully expressing myself and sharing this truth and the gifts with other people. So, um, you know, coming from that place, it's, it's like my core wounds became my greatest strengths to be someone who stands and says, no matter what's happened to you, no matter what you're experiencing, no matter what your beliefs are, your experiences have been, you've always been worthy. You've always been perfect. Mm -hmm. You've always been whole and complete. And all of that was just the perfect things that you created and attracted and chose to experience so that you could become this gift you are of like the mess you went through to become the message that you are. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a, we're all here just to assist each other in ascension on the journey. Yes, I completely agree and resonate with everything you just said. I was also raised in a in a high poverty environment and part of my my growth and my wounds was healing my financial story with it's okay to receive. There's always more. I'm not in competition with anyone. We're all here to collaborate and help each other, lift each other up. 
up level all uprise together and create this team there's there's just so many collaborations or opportunities for collaborations when we come from this divine power and our inner power from our our true power what we're supposed to give back to the world i i completely agree with all, everything that you just said i wanted to ask you oh, go ahead that you yeah. said so people hear this because this is a beautiful nugget you even tapped on that comparison is the thief of all joy mm -hmm. so when we go into like i should be like them or i need to be like that or or i only have this instead of being like ah oh, this is what i share and, oh that's what you share like you were talking about my friend and i just doing an event together and it's like yeah it's so easy when we come from that place of like we're all just love and we're all just here to share versus like having our ego mind that wants to be like i'm not enough and what i have to do so i love that yeah we, we just get to all share Oh yes, I love it too. And my my experience is even when I feel like someone is maybe doing something similar to me, that's even more of a space that I can step into and come from that collaborative space. Yeah. Because every time that that's happened, and when we do talk and connect, we're yeah. coming at it from a very different energy most of the time. Yeah, and true. so like who we're attracting is probably different. What we're exactly giving to our clients is a little unique. You know, that it, so even if we feel like on the surface we do something similar, most of the time we're doing something very unique from each other that we can learn and rise together from my, from my personal experience. Yeah, well, yeah. and I always say like you have, you have your own voice box, you have your own fingerprints, you have your own toe prints, hmm. you are 37.2 trillion uniquely designed cells. So there's no way we can be alike. So I love that you even brought that up because I think a lot of influencers might go, well, I have to be like that person who's doing what I do, or I'm not enough like that, or I need to know more instead of realizing, like you said, people will be drawn to you because they hear your voice for whatever reason. They resonate with your story, your, your unique energy and essence draws to them. <clears throat> so it's going to be coming from, it, it doesn't matter what, if, if even your knowledge is the same, how you teach is different, how you are is different. And so when we all just like let go of all that bullshit that's holding us back and be like, cool, how do I just share what I have? Then you receive the next level of receiving, which, you know, you talked about, you get to be worthy of receiving, but you get to actually share who you are to be able to receive. Yes, for sure. For sure. I wanted, to, I wanted to dive in also, Marcy, you're holding this huge container for people to step into. And as yeah. coming, coming from an influencer myself, it, sometimes I'm ultra aware. I need to be ultra self-aware as to am I personally in alignment? And what am I doing to keep myself in alignment? Because I am holding, when you have live events, also, when you're one-on-one -on -one coaching, you're holding this huge, powerful container for other people to step into within yourself or outwardly. How, how do you maintain that? How do you personally stay in alignment and then be able to hold this? Yeah. Well, I love yeah. that you said that, actually, because I had just gotten off the call with a guy that was at my event this last weekend. And he's like, I just, I mean, literally had a lot of walls and guards up. And he's like, I just appreciate that you, you create the space and hold a space where everything's okay. And it's safe. It's just safe. Right. And so when we look at how are we operating, when you say, are you in alignment to that? How are we operating in our day to day life, a moment by moment experience where our, um, cause I believe that the only job in relationship at all is to be hold a container of love, support, and acceptance. Because again, when we look at like what we might think is, is our perception are true, someone else, it, a totally different perception is true for them. So we're here in this human experience to experience all things. We're all human. We have every right to have whatever experience or perception or journey we're here to have that is our choice, right? So it comes from this idea, like you talked a little bit about before with like, you know, dropping the idea of comparison, that we drop the idea that we have to be like something or do something else. When we just drop the, the story and idea that everything is, or, or choose that everything is okay. Like there's no judgment, there's no, so with me, because I, uh, my gift is kind of seeing all things and obviously all the experiences that I went through, I'm like, you could, I've heard it all. And there's no judgment or story around whatever you've experienced from cheating to, you know, anything, 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 and everything is okay because that's how we actually expose ourselves to be, you know, to see what's there. And when we have shame energy around anything, shame energy is the lowest vibrating energy. Mm -hmm. So you think you're having a hard time blocking money or manifesting love and, and, and anything in your life, if you're holding on to shame in any way, 
if there's blame or, or resentment or resistance around anything in your life, anything from your past experience, that is blocking manifesting. Now, the same thing applies if you choose to look at another being and, and have resistance to them. Because all of a sudden you're creating, think about the energy of resistance is mm. contraction. It's like, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to contract. I'm going to guard myself. I'm going to block instead of <gasps> expansion. So expansion is openness and able to receive. Contraction is resistance. So you get to choose to be in alignment in your day-to-day -day being. What That's why I say, like, are you unapologetically being yourself? Are you, you know, raising your hand to be seen and heard and saying, it's okay for me to, to express what I feel is truth and share what I know and be who I am. And there's a journey to that, right? There's a journey oh, yeah. to that. Well, you know, I remember the first time I started doing videos was like, I constantly just like judged the crap out of myself. And I had to just be like, oh, you know what? I'm perfectly like, I'm perfectly being me and choose to break down those stories and just be like, cool, I'm doing it. And then starting to now it's like, I wouldn't even think about or care at all about what someone would think about me because I completely see it for the truth of what it is that I'm just, it's just a projection based on what they're triggered by, like what's going on inside them. Mm. So if I'm being free and big and expressive and that scares them that they're afraid they'll be judged, they can't be free and big and expressive. They may be like, oh, she's just so out there. Or she's just so crazy. Or, you know, she just calmed down. And believe me, I've had for years people be like, oh, if you just calm down or you just wouldn't swear, or you just wouldn't do this or that. And I'm like, and you know, yet I have million dollar clients. I have, you know, high level, I've created a million dollar empire being unapologetically mean versus if I was trying to conform with the masses and hide myself and, and control what they saw. Again, the energy is scarcity. It's lack, it's hide, it's mask. And all I'm going to do is attract people based on that, that the moment I'm myself, they're going to go, I don't really like you anyways. So rejection is always really protection. So when we mm -hmm. actually are ourselves and people go, mm, I'm not ready for that. We just know I'm just triggering and allowing them to see what's inside them that they still get to love. And they might not be ready for me and that's okay. And it opens up the space for the people who are and who are seeking the freedom. So when you talk about being in alignment to hold that space, do you hold that space for yourself? You can't be anything for anyone else you aren't for yourself. Just like you can only accept the amount of love from someone else you actually give to yourself. So it's kind of, I know it seems bass backwards. People are always like, wait a minute. Uh, like if I say, you know, um, you can only uh, uh, give as much love as you can receive. And they're like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Because what, what you're probably used to seeing and experiencing even with high level influencers, right? Is they're like, I give to my spouse, I give to my kids, I'm doing my job, and I put, they put themselves last, right? Mm -hmm. So they're like, I give, 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 give. How does that reflect the amount that I'm receiving? And it does, exactly, because when you think about you're giving so much love and you can only receive the amount of love you, you can give out, right? That's what I mean. You can only receive the same amount of love that you can give. So people think, well, I'm giving so much love, but I'm receiving so little. But this is the truth. When you're giving because you have to, you should, you need to, it's resentment energy. It's, I have to do this so they'll be happy with me. I need to do this because I'm supposed to, or people aren't going to like me. I should show up this way. And all of that you're doing is put out in a, a negative, low vibration of love. That's not love. That's resentment energy. So mm -hmm. instead, when you're choosing to show up and say, and you, you love yourself whole and complete and you give to yourself, so then everything that you're giving is full of love and it's a clear energy. That's the level of love you can receive. Hence, if you don't shame or blame yourself and you choose to love yourself whole and complete, what do you receive? So it really comes down to, you know, is everything you're doing and being in alignment with who you, if with what you're saying you want to be receiving. If you're like, yeah, I want to be this, this vessel of truth and I want to share my message, but you're hiding. Hmm, that's not in alignment. Where, where do you get to clean that up? Clean up the hiding and see what stories or behaviors or programs or patterns are operating that are keeping you hiding. And when you break them down, it's like, oh, now it's easy. I can move beyond it and I can go, cool. I can practice being more seen and being more expressed. So I, I, I think I just get to choose to live at every moment and, and live by those principles and truths as well. Yes, totally. And, and you're also a mom. Do you feel like that that has been helpful for you to set those kind of set those boundaries, even with your kids that like, well, I'm also a mom. So like for me, I sometimes tell my daughter, it's been a long day or I'm, I'm like, I'm done right now. <laughs> I, I can't necessarily have, I'm not going to be present with you. So if you give me a little bit of time, I need to, maybe I need to sit down and read a good book, dive into a book that I love, take a hot bath, meditate, 
and then I'll be able to be present with you. And she's so, she's so familiar with me saying those kind of things. She's like, okay, cool. I'll, I, I need some me time too. I'll see you in, in an hour. And yes. we're, yeah. yeah. Do you, how do you, how do you handle that? Yeah. Well, I have, I do a whole coaching series on epic relationships because me mm. doing the game, everything that I do reflects in every area. So it's like, you know, even before I started really even business coaching with people, I remember being like, I'm not a business coach. And I realized everyone that I worked with quadrupled their income. It's like, of course, everything, inner beliefs and blocks and, and things will then show up in your relationships, in your business, in the money game, in your, in, in, in your, um, your connection to yourself, all those things. So one of the things that I believe in, and again, this is aligning to like the laws and the truths that we've been confused on. Like we've been, we've been, we, we, all I really do is I bring people back to remembrance. Okay. So that is liberation, right? I'm bringing you back to remember how powerful you are, what a creator you are, how to operate with all your operating systems. What I mean by everything being in alignment is all your operating systems are checked. So you manifest. And when we are not in that is when we're, that's how we've been trained. We've been basically from the time we were born, we began to become programmed in with limiting beliefs and the stories and the human experience stuff that keeps us disconnected from that. So one of the principles and laws that I teach is that, and this is why I say the only job in relationship is to hold a container of love, support, and acceptance because at the, uh, in alignment, relationships in alignment, in conscious operation, there is no such thing as sacrifice. I mean, and if everyone just sat with that for a second, there is no such thing as sacrifice. I literally do not believe in sacrifice. And, and sacrifice, actually, I mean, it's if you're familiar with the gene keys, it's like a, a map of your, your genetics and your DNA of like your shadows and the things that you get to overcome, which is a whole nother deep dive. But one of mine was actually my gift in that is sacrifice. And I really was like, wait, I don't understand. And it took me some time to really understand that that meant sacrifice and meaning sacrifice, letting go of even a thought of judgment or rejection from, from anyone else and being willing to sacrifice myself and stand for truth. Yet it's a very different thing than saying, well, okay, we, in, in, in our society, we kind of do this is like, well, I'll compromise and you compromise. And that's what relationship is about. All that it is, 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 you know, when we say, oh, I'm whole and complete with you. It's, that's just two codependent halves, broken halves, you know, being two codependent halves. It's not, doesn't make a whole, it doesn't become complete. You yourself get to become complete and you attract what's complete. So doing that even with your daughter to be able to say, hey, I notice I'm feeling, you know, uh, like I require some time for me and you're, you're doing that and you're honoring yourself, you're giving yourself love. She gets to go give herself love. There's not a sacrifice. Okay, I guess I'll do this for you. So it's very much how I operate with my boys and that we, we don't believe in sacrifice. So we're always like, cool, what's a win-win? Where is everything a win-win? Even from us choosing a movie, it's like I have specific date nights with my boys and all sorts of things. It's like, what's a win-win for you? What are you seeking? What am I seeking? And let's break this down. Let's find what's a win-win for everybody. We don't believe in going, well, you know, could you just maybe let that go and we'll do this? It's like, well, let's just consider everyone and always create a win-win. So yeah, it, it's, it's very much a part of, um, I, I mean, I teach a whole thing on conscious parenting and conscious. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I completely agree with you. Yeah. And that, that totally goes in with parenting. When, when it comes, like go, going back to your clients, when it comes to your clients, what if there is, I'm wondering, how do you handle, and I'm sure you've come, come with this or overcame or had certain situations where you're not sure, you're staying in your integrity, like you're not sure what's going on with the other side and how do you create a win-win for everybody and still stay within your integrity? And you know for sure you're in your integrity. Have you, I'm sure you had this experience before and I'm wondering how, because it can be stressful for a lot of influencers that they want to stay in their integrity, though they don't want to kind of be a walking mat or be too empathetic or have somebody walk over them, but they don't want to be too, too much also come from like, well, I know what's best and I'm the boss, even though they are the boss, they're coming from a boss energy. But we're still in our integrity, though we're not sure it's going to be a win. We want it to be a win-win, but we're not sure. How do you handle those kind of things? All of yeah. that makes it really, really fucking hard. Like, that's a lot of human stories. Like, right, we have right. to, even, even that we have to be the boss or that we have to right. control. Control is always controlling us. I See, I, this is where it makes life so easy is there's pure transparency. There's hmm. nothing to hide and nothing to prove. So in every conversation, even with like today, I, I actually took on a $250,000 client 
and was just like, you know, like, cool, tell me exactly what your money situation is. What's it showing up like? Like, what is the profit? Where are you at? What can you invest? How can you, it's like, I just had a whole conversation of understanding the person so I could, I could feel into if it is a win-win. It gets to be a win-win that I am in alignment to serve and support the person and they're in alignment with me. There's no, there's no like, well, you know, there doesn't have to be a guessing game when you're just clear and you choose authentic communication even. So for me to say, help me understand this. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm tuning into. I'm still getting curious about this. So it sounds like you might be dealing with like someone who maybe even hasn't set boundaries for themselves out of love. Like if I was like on with someone, they're like, well, so I'll tell you the story. The first time um, I got the download and the inspiration that I got to work with people at a million dollar level. Again, now I think the highest level of coaching I had done was like my, I went straight up to like a hundred, um, no, 120, then 150,000 was like my first personal clients that I chose to do. And Austin, I, I take groups down to the jungle to do um, deep transformational work when I was for one of my Ascension adventures and I was in my own experience and it was like, no, you get to work with these people at this level. And I was like, I, I literally got that it was a million dollar level, meaning they were willing to invest in themselves at that level because that's how much they were, you know, creating value for the world because money is just a reflection of how much value you're creating for the world and how much you love yourself. So there can be all these gifted, beautiful people that have all these genius and yet they have all this value to give, yet they don't love themselves enough to say, hey, this is who I am and I'm willing to say, this is what I do and this would be the exchange for that and receive it, right? So if there's a block of loving yourself, you can't claim that and ask for that and own that. And if you're not you know, willing, loving yourself enough to be seen and heard, people can't find you, can't have your assistance as well. So the first time I, I got this download, it was like, I get to work with people at a million dollar level. I came out of the jungle, I was like, hey, all right, guess what? I'm now opening up my schedule. I'm working with five people at a million dollar level. And the first you know, person that heard me say this was like, a uh, million dollars? They're like, uh, like, Tony Robbins is the only one that does that. And I was like, and I'm Marcy Locke and I do it too. Right. Like I just claimed it and knew that this is what I felt inspired to do. And I know that what I, what I guide people through it, the value exchange is there. And so with my first million dollar client, um, uh, you know, when I first talked to this guy, he was like, he's like, Hey, I'm having this issue. You know, could we fly out and see you? And could we just have like a session with you and maybe like pay you like four to five grand? And I, I just simply was like, and so obviously he didn't really understand even what I do. I was like, I was like, I was like, thank you. I appreciate that you're, you know, you're wanting more. And I said, that's not what I do. I said, if you want to work with me, this would be the requirements. You get to go through this. You get to apply here. You get to listen to this stuff. You know, I'm like, if you were even to have an hour with me, it'd be like 15,000 plus, let alone, I don't just one off, you know, I'm like, and so if you want to go through that, then we can have a conversation. And he, he like tried to negotiate me doing it. I'm like, I'm like, the only way I'm willing to work with you is I believe in being in full integrity. I get to understand you and I, I take on my clients to do bigger things. I'm not just, you know, going to do a one-off session. So if you feel like called to that, awesome, right? I didn't compromise my values or what I was. So when he went through, um, you know, some of my, my, my stuff, he, he's like, oh my gosh. Um, and so then we get on the phone and we're, we're talking out and he's like, what I want is like, he wanted what I offered at my million dollar package. But he kept saying, but I want it for the $500,000 package. I'm like, cool, that's awesome. So if that's what you want, then it would be $500,000. He's like, but I want this. And I'm like, then that would be a million. Like I literally was like, and, and it came down to it. He got my million dollar package. Within five weeks, he got, uh, he made another 5 million. Like there was an ROI Amazing. turn around on it, you know, it instantly. Because again, the level that you're willing to invest in this in yourself, it's the law of parallel returns. The energy that you put into something is the energy that you receive back. So it's just like if we, we go, you know, put energy into our body, right? We do, we give our body like the health and the strength and we put energy into our body. What do we have back? We have energy in our body. When you invest in yourself to upgrade who you are and your expansion, your possibilities, you're saying I'm worthy and you receive it right back. But when people are stuck in this place, like, well, when I get that, then I'll do that program. Then I'll invest in myself. Then I'll do that. We're actually saying I'm not worthy. I'll give myself permission only if it lined up the right way which is saying I'm not worthy, which means resistance keeps coming up. So my point to all that is you are the only one who can ever set your value and your worth. Only you can ever say, hey, this is like I honor my value. So it's not a matter of like trying to play a guessing game to hold yourself in integrity and them integrity. You just simply call it out. And you're like, this is what I am committed to. So I believe in under promise and over deliver. Like I'm like, this is what I'm committed to. This is what you get with me. And 
I know when I see anything, like I take out my personal clients, they're family to me. The people in my programs, I very much like, I have such a love for, I know what they're going through. I'm there in any way I can. And I'm always like, cool, this will serve you. Go here, do this. And I'll, I, do, I give, 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 but not in a, a thing that's like, oh, I'm giving and I'm not even getting paid or I'm not getting value. There's no resentment and energy. I'm like, this is what, and I, I commit to what I will give. Like, this is what you get from me. You get this many calls, you get this many experiences, you get this many days with me. And I know that if more comes up that I feel like I get to give them to serve them, I will. But it's, it's, you set your boundary and you create the value of who you are. And so it's not a, everything that you're seeing in front of you is a, is a reflection of what's going on inside you. So it's actually not, if, if, if someone's having an issue with this, it's not there. It's not because of the person they're dealing with. It's because of them. Hmm. They're projecting it. Maybe they haven't learned there. Maybe they're not, you know, communicating clearly. They're not choosing to be fully honest. Maybe they're not owning how they do the same thing. So even when you say, you know, you're in integrity, but the other person isn't, that can be a story because until we get curious, we don't know what their perceptions are. We can never claim to know what's inside them, what's going on in their head or their thoughts. We can actually only claim to know what my thoughts are, what my feelings are. So I can say, Hey, I know what I'm feeling, you know, an energy off, or I noticed I, this behavior, you know, brought up this question for me, like, you know, and this is what we agreed upon. So I'm really wanting to get back on track or understand why this got off of what we agreed upon. Like, what's your experience? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We can totally, we, we can totally own, we can only kind of claim our side and our what's going on with us and being on track and mm -hmm. kind of coming back to that track. And I'm getting this feeling. I love that conversation, opening it up in that way. Cause I feel that are probably a lot of people actually stop being entrepreneurs sometimes because they're like, this is just too much pressure. Like yeah. trying to handle all these deep conversations and how do I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's like it, it the, probably the biggest challenge um that I see influencers actually have is is accepting how easy it really can be mm. because you're the ones making it hard it's mm -hmm. like it's as easy or as hard as you want to make it just like your perception about eating healthy or you know what you want to do so there's a lot of things that get to come into play to like finding that alignment where it's like you're forcing yourself to do something. Well, no wonder it's hard. It doesn't even feel good to you. Instead, it's like, oh, well, how, what do I want? How would this get to be fun and easy? Again, so now you're more like a child in, in creation energy that's excitement, curiosity, wonderment. And if you're doing something that you don't love to do, it's not, you know, it, it, instead it's like, well, wow, you know, how could I create support around this? Who else could, you know, how could I have someone else do this if I get to do this? And we get to find so that you are in the energy of fun and ease and play and joy. Because isn't that the, the reason we're being, we're stepping in our light anyways and being an influence is to give light and be light. And enlightenment is in light. It's in, and think about it, high yeah. vibe, high vibration, energy, love, joy, play. That is what attracts to us receiving more money, more epic relationships, the bliss and the joy, because we're in the vibration and the frequency of that. When we're down here in this like, okay, I have to save the world and it's gotta be hard, da, 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 da. It literally, like you're in a scarcity energy. You're in saying it's gotta be hard, it's lack, it's struggle. Exactly why you're creating that. So a lot of time, it's so silly what our human brains do. I always call it our human brains. It's like silly human yeah. brain as we yeah, catch it. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like it's really easy for you too when when things come up that you're living unapologetically and I feel like I've I've been doing that since I was a child. I've been like really extroverted and bold and got in trouble a lot for talking too much and like starting petitions in class and like I don't like that rule so I'm just not going to do that. Let's change that rule. <laughs> I was very rebellious and still tend to be very rebellious in in a positive way like a shaking shaking things up for change maker and a challenging the the status quo like we maybe let's think about doing it like this and then every and then there's a tribe that's kind of like relying on me and oh we're gonna do it like that now okay well whatever you say like we're gonna we're gonna be doing it like that now and flow is changing yeah right? yeah we're all flowing together and learning how to also learning from each other but when you have, it, se it seems like this is a strength of yours and I wanted to dive deeper into it. It's easier for some of us to let go of any kind of resistance that we're receiving. Like you said, when you're living unapolog unapologetically, you ha sometimes have people say, Marcy, if you didn't say, you know, fuck this one time or you didn't say this, like, how do you, 
when we lay down, so for me, for example, when I lay down to sleep at night, sometimes I kind of have downloads from the day. And if that's one of the downloads, I try to imagine that I'm letting it drift off, that I'm letting it go. And I'm understanding that's something that's coming from them. Maybe they're not quite standing in their power. And how can I benefit them from standing in my power and they keep seeing me doing that? How can I benefit them in that? That's how I personally am able to let it go. But I always feel like I can do even better at that topic. And I feel like that's a strength of yours. Can you talk about how you, how you do that? So what, just to clarify, what you're asking is how do I deal with resistance and let things- Yes. And, and also when you, when you come up against something, not necessarily against, but when, when someone reaches out to you in a negative way and they're yeah. somewhat trying to influence you in a negative way and how do you kind of just let that roll off of you and not absorb it? There's a couple things to that. First off, I want everyone to know, like, it's part of our human experience that you have all traits to you. You have all sides of you. You wouldn't know what it feels like to, to stand in a place and feel good and feel your truth and share with people. If you didn't also what it knows, knows like to be in a place where you're like, Oh, I'm scared. I'm not enough. Am, am I going to be rejected? So w- instead of if fighting it or almost kind of distracting from it, I believe in accepting and owning it being like, Oh, like I actually, cause pre seven years old is when we develop all of our programming. So it's like, you are literally, you are as much as you probably don't want to be, you are your parents. You are the programming that you receive from your parents because pre seven years old is when you're only operating out of your subconscious mind. There's no logical understanding to it. So if mom's screaming and then all you know is you hear screaming, you, you, it, you, you go off of what I heard, what I felt, what I saw and you make a decision. So it might be like, mom was mad. You know, she said this, uh, I, I feel afraid. I feel like I'm not enough. And that's what you decide. I'm not enough. Mom's mad at me. If I don't act this way, you didn't go, Oh, mom was stressed. She had a long day and she was raising her voice, but it had nothing to do with me. There's no logical understanding to it. Right. And so then we develop these programs and, and, and that we're operating out of. So when we simply understand, I, I believe forgiveness comes through understanding. Okay. So when I, when, you know, if I per se, you say like, got a hater, um, you know, that says, you know, something to me, I don't see it as I'm being attacked because I know the truth is, and I'm like, I'm just, again, like you said, triggering something in them that's inside that they still get to, they haven't accepted and loved. See, so when I can accept just like we're all things, just, I'm just as much as a bitch as I am an angel. I can be just as much manipulative as I can be completely honest because integrity and authenticity is so, so important to me. And I can also own how have I manipulated myself. So if ever we see a projection on someone, it's like, oh, we sabotage or we can convince ourselves of something. We can choose to ignore something happening like a program or a behavior we're doing that doesn't serve us because we don't want to deal with it. That's manipulation. So we have all traits and all things within us, right? So instead of ever, there, there's just like, there's no judgment around it. It's like, oh, ah, like I actually get really soft because I know that's just their six-year-old. That's their five-year-old. Just like my five-year-old, if I'm triggered or I feel fear or I feel pain or anything, and believe me, I'm telling you, I still experience it. So it's not like I've just chosen to be in this place where I'm unapologetically me and it's easy, meaning it is easy because I know who I am. But what I mean is I'm still, I always will have my human moments to allow me to have even more love, abundance, et cetera. So when I do get triggered, it's like, oh, so I actually teach a, a five steps to overcome sabotage or five steps to you know, to like move through the programs and patterns, I'm happy to give you, you know, those audios that you can share with your audience. They're like my freedom audios. And it just helps us understand how we're meant to operate in our divinity. So it's like when we just simply go, oh, what am I feeling? And we get soft with ourselves because, because the subconscious mind, the three-year-old is, is who we're, we're dealing with. And now imagine if you go into a room and you scream at a child and say, you're supposed to do this. Da, 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 da. Do they feel safe to be loved? Do they feel safe to talk and express or do they contract? They contract, right? Mm-hmm. But if, if, if your child is, I love this analogy I always use. I think I use on my audios where it's like, if they're like afraid that there's monsters under the bed and we run in and we're screaming, there's no monsters under the bed, go to bed. They don't feel safe to go to bed. But if you walk and you go, oh, what are you feeling? 
oh, you're afraid there's monsters in the bed. Why? You know, or this is the why. Why? Because there's monsters in the bed. Oh, and we get curious about it and we break it down to be like, well, let's look. Let's get curious. Oh, do we see any monsters? Where would that thought come from? And we're just getting curious. We're being soft with ourselves. We're in discovery. We're in curiosity. That is creation energy, wonderment, curiosity, excitement. So then we go into like, well, what do we really want? Like we want to feel safe. What would make us feel safe right now? Would we, could we turn on a nightlight? Can we like put a bubble of protection around us? Can we talk to our angels? Can we remember that of course we're always safe? Like, and, and we, we get to, so now we have a new thought and a new belief that we're focused on. And now we get to take the action to be able to align to that. So that, I mean, and, and I kind of share that in the freedom audios, which I, again, I'm happy to give you guys, but that's how I myself, now that I've trained myself and remembered how I'm meant to operate, my mind instantly goes to, if there's resistance, like, oh, interesting. Like, I don't fight it. I'm like accepting it. I like allow and accept what's in front of me to be in front of me because I know I attracted it. I contracted it. I had the vibration. I created it for some way. It's there for me to heal. So when I see what's in front of me and I accept it and I allow it and I get really curious about it and then I go, oh, I appreciate that I'm seeing this. So what most people would call their shit and be run from, I see my greatest gifts are in my shit. And so I actually don't see my shit as shit anymore. I'm like, oh, Oh, interesting that I attracted that or what is this? And I get really curious and soft with it to give me the feedback to see what gets to be healed within me still. What I might still be rejecting or running from or blocking or etc. then to allow me to have greater. So if a, if a hater, you know, says something, all I can do is honor them that they're actually, I see them as a five-year-old that's projecting onto me what they're afraid of what they still haven't loved within themselves, what, what, what I'm triggering for them. And I'm a perfectly contracted probably with them to show up to trigger them in that way. Right. Yeah. So, so it's like, I simply am like, thank you for letting me know. And again, the nuggets here in even communication, conscious communication relationships, someone says, Oh, you did this to me. And again, that's a projection you did. Cause it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, we don't know what someone was actually trying to do, but see, we don't know how we're unconsciously operating here. But even if someone says you da, 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 and a hater might say that. And I was like, thank you for letting me know that that's how you feel. Or thank you for letting me know that's your perception or that's what your belief is, or that's your understanding. I can understand how you would have that thought or perception based on that. And this is what's true for me. Like, I remember a silly one. I was like, oh, I mean, I haven't had haters for, I mean, I, it's, it's hardly ever. And it's, it's funny though. I remember some, because I do this, if you've ever seen my videos, I'm locking down the truth with Marcia Lock. <laughs> nice. It's like my M that kind of looks like oh, that. Right. And so yeah, I'm locking it down. So I was nice. like locking down the truth with Marcia Lock. One day out of nowhere, someone's like, you do the devil horns and you're the devil and blah, blah, blah. And all these things. So I'm like, oh, interesting. I was like, thank you for letting me know. That's your perception. What's true for me is it symbolizes, you know, the, you know, I'm locking down the truth and it's just yeah. a locking the M down and that's what it is for me. And, and he went on and on and on to try to be like, pull me apart. And, and again, I don't feel a trigger around it. I simply go, I can, I can understand your perception. This is what's true for me and feel free to not follow me. Like, isn't it interesting how some people want to just, instead of just, if they don't resonate with someone, just go somewhere else, put your energy somewhere else. Instead, they're like, you're wrong and da, 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 da. We're trying to prove our point right because there's obviously a trigger for them mm -hmm. that they don't, they don't feel it, it triggers. They're not enough. It triggers something that they believe in that they believe to be true. And remember when we realize all things are true. Okay. There's no, like what's true for you and what's true for me can still be true because you might perceive something and I perceive something else and they're completely different, but we both perceive something different. It's true for us. So when we simply honor each other in that, I can honor that that's what you're experiencing, whether it be lack or scarcity or worry, et cetera. I can't even say, I know the way, like, that's why I, I you know, it's not necessarily a boss energy for me with my clients. It's simply me saying, this is what I've learned. Hmm. Are you open? Let's look, let's get curious together. I'm more of like, I'm holding your hand through the journey. And we're just here together, holding a safe space for you to completely discover, feel all things. And I can only be that person that reaffirms for them. That's okay that you've had that thought or that feeling. Let's look at that. Where did that come from? And oh, can we own and accept that? Now, how did that actually serve and support us? If you thought you were a loser, so you've been striving your whole life to not be a loser and you're rejecting me a loser and you're running and you're in this energy, we can also go, well, how did being a loser serve me? And am I a loser? Like, do I ever wear socks that don't match or, you know, dance all funky and people, you know, that people could consider that to be a loser. We can actually, when we own the trait and we see how it served us, we can go, oh, actually, because I, that assisted me to strive for something greater. And I can also know that just as much as I can act like a loser because I own that trait, 
I also am a brilliant divine being that I own that trait as well. So when you just understand these principles, I love to come back to the principles and laws of truth because I'm like, when you understand the principle, there's nothing to fight. There's no one to, to reject. There's no resistance. You just simply see it for what it is. That's their person experiencing their perceptions and their human experience and what they're triggered by. And I'm, why would I ever claim to know any different of what's better for them? That would be like me saying, you all must live like me. That's not very conscious. Instead of knowing as a divine being, you're choosing whatever hardships you are right now. And when you understand and give yourself permission to have something different, you can choose something different. And I can just share that with you, but it's always going to be your choice. I actually have no ownership in it. That's why I'm not like, I'm not here to save you. You can only save yourself. So I think it's, I believe in breaking things down so that you, mm -hmm. you have the understanding, the context, but then you also get to align to the behaviors of acting and being that way. So just, I mean, that's the easiest way for me to explain it is when you see it for the truth of what it is, there's actually no resistance to it. It's just a matter of, are you willing to lean into it and allow and see what's there to give you something greater? Now, if you're not, if people are like, no, 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 you know, so going back to your kind of like, do you just let it wash off? If you feel clean and clear with that, awesome. Most people could just be like, oh, I'm just going to let that go. That's, and if it's still there, there's most likely it's going to keep showing up because it resembles something from your past experience that you haven't completely healed. But if it doesn't trigger you at all, like me, I'm like, oh, that's so silly. That's so funny. And I just give them love and honor. And I don't even like, it doesn't even phase me. But in the past, believe me, it did. So I had to go on my own journey and be like, oh, how could they say that about me? And they don't even know me. And da, 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 da. they don't know what I'm meant to do. And, you know, it like made me feel so horrible. And I had to own, I had to see, uh, go through my own experience to own all this and see what was there to then be like, oh, I can honor them that that's just where they're at. And that's what they're experiencing. And I'm meant to be here to trigger people. Of course, I actually like now I, I see it as a compliment when people call me cray cray versus in the past, if they called me crazy, it might've been like, oh, I don't want to yeah. be crazy. I'm like, thank you. Yes, I'm not normal. Yeah. I appreciate that. I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, when people call me awkward, I'm like, yeah, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. I've been, I've been like, not like anyone else most of my life. So thank, like, yeah. I take it as a compliment. Yeah. I'm like, huh? Right? Yeah. Why is that a compliment for you? I'm like, well, it means that I'm, I'm standing out. I stood out for you. I stood out for you enough for you to say something <laughs> to me about it. And that's, what I was trying and to you do into it, you know, like, yeah, it, it, I mean, so there are other things you can do energetic clearings. You can cut cords. There's all sorts of things you can do to support yourself in evolving to that. Yeah. I think it comes down to, if you feel it's the energy you feel, right? Because it doesn't matter what we tell ourselves. This is where I feel like self-empowerment is very surface bullshit. It's like, let's just say the affirmation. And, and so you're like, Oh, I'm, uh, I'm going to let that go. If that doesn't, if you feel like that you're just saying something just like, Oh, I'm good. I love making this much money or I'm six pack abs or whatever you say. And your body's like, Oh, uh -uh, you are not like, you've had a hard experience with that. And that that's, that's surface bullshit there. There, what you're feeling is going to be what's that's the frequency, what you're going to manifest, whatever you're vibrating. That's why if we continue to just do these things with our heads and the mental game, like people say mindset, 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 mindset. I used to think that too. I started in the mindset arena. Now I think the mindset is like using my pinky finger out of my entire body's capabilities to be like mm. only having my pinky finger. It's just to connect the dots. My feeling center, my perception center, all these operating systems bring us into alignment of receiving something. So when we're just speaking something and yet it doesn't feel true, that's why we're disconnected from it and we can't manifest it. We're going to manifest what we're vibrating. The only way to, to manifest something higher is to raise our frequencies with the words that we're using, what we're choosing to see. So again, I don't see anyone as attacking me because I see them all out of love. I see them as a scared little five-year-old that's in fear. And I'm like, oh, like literally when my clients tell me stuff with like their parents or anyone that you hear me, I, what comes out of my mouth almost every time is like, oh, like when they're dealing with it, I'm like, oh, because I see the five-year-old. So I see it out of love. And when we understand love is all things, everything came from love because we actually contracted or attracted even our shadow experiences, right? To transmute them into light, the darkness becomes light. Then we actually see, oh, I actually asked for that out of love for myself to learn this lesson so I could become this person so I could share this light. Holy fuck, it's all been love, right? It just yes. makes it easy. So true. So true. Um, before we wrap up, I have two more questions. The, okay. One of them yeah. is, so when, when you were going through all those, all those transitions of going from 
I feel personally attacked or that, that, oh, that hurts when somebody says something like that, when we're, when we're really starting to live unapologetically, when somebody says something, it tends to be, tends to really hurt. Like it's, it's really difficult not to take it personally. And when in that transition, did you reach out to certain mentors? Like who did you rely on to be your rock and really yeah, support? What am I one of my favorite books that teaches more of what you're asking for around this mm -hmm. is called dark side of the light chasers by Debbie Ford. That's oh. a really great book. I mean, I've always had mentors and coaches because I believe it's just like, I couldn't actually mentor and coach people. I wouldn't be in authenticity and in integrity and in alignment of investing in myself and always growing if I wasn't doing the same thing. Right. It's like, Oh, you know, invest in me to assist you, but I'm not doing the same thing for myself. That's just out of alignment. That's why. And that's a big cue for people. It's like, if you're not invested in your own self growth, you're not in the beingness of it as well, then it doesn't match that you're like teaching people to do the same thing. Right. So, I mean, I've always had mentors and coaches from back in the day when I, I mean, I was a $2 an hour waitress with 10 bucks to my name. Uh, it was after I found out a cheating husband got divorced. Um, and I, I paid a friend to sleep on my couch at night to be able to go waitress at night. It was like, that's how low I felt. I was like, the only thing I felt like I could do was go be a waitress at night so I could still take care of my kids in the day because they were one and four years old. And I remember the first the uh, I was attracted to, or this, this came into my space is like seeing this thing. It was like moms that are, are doing their passion and, um, you know, ended up being, it was like a $500 thing. I had 10 bucks in my name to my name. And I was like, how do I get to create that? What can I do? And, and I just found, you know, found the money to do that. And then I invested, um, into work with that coach, $15,000 and I had no money to my name. So again, it was like, what is possible? How can I create this? Cause I always say, if you want something and you're not moving towards it in some way, you're in a bullshit story, excuse or validation as to why you can't have it. And then again, all you're saying at your core is I'm not worthy Oh, down the road, win this, give myself permission later. And then even if you earn more money to be able to do it, what happens? Things show up to take it because you already declared you're not worthy of it. So it's like, what could be possible? How would that work? So, um, I mean, that was, that was, you know, when I first invested in myself and I saw myself instantly turn around. Cause again, when you're highly invested in yourself, what happens? You're like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this information. I'm implementing it. Right. When, it, but when we're like, ah, oh, you know, it doesn't really matter there's not really an event. There's not that energy. There's not the law of parallel return and the energy that you receive. So of course I invest myself and I receive back. So I mean, I've always had, I've just been, I, I geek out on, um, continually expansion, like continual expansion into my divinity and, and remembering my greatest self or remembering of how we're meant to operate. So yeah, you can always seek support, but there's also, if you're someone who's like, I have, you know, this, uh, uh how can you invest in yourself? Am I might be a book. It might be in like, what are the action steps that I get to take? How do I take little steps and move forward? And I always say, put your head down and just look at the next inch. And then you look up and you've come a long way versus we look up and we're like, I want to go to an epic life, but we really don't know how to get there. Cause it looks so crazy long and big that we shut down and we go, I don't know how mm -hmm. I can. I just, you know, so, um, yeah, but I mean, that's one of my favorites, one of my favorite books, um, around the projection thing that we were talking about. Um, so that you get to see how you just get to love and honor every single person and not really, um, take it on as something for you. It's actually teaches you what's inside you. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I know we're about to go into 2018 and or we'll be in 2018 when we launch this, this podcast. Awesome. Happy 2018. Yeah. Happy 2018. <laughs> what, how do you sit down? Do you have a specific thing that you do with goal setting? And I I do a heart mind mapping pretty routinely. Um, so I don't just normally do like the just at the beginning of the year kind of a thing. Because again, I believe in living in alignment every moment and day by day. It's like, you know, so it's like going off of what feels good and where do I get to go and seeing where I'm called. Um, and then putting somewhat of a structure around that. I, I, I literally believe in like, I'm an open vessel. So things will come through. It's just like when I speak or like this, I was like, you can ask me whatever you want to ask me. I have no attachments to like, I don't need to prepare or be like, ask me these questions or try to position myself a certain way. I'm just here to share whatever light comes out. And if people resonate with it and they get some information that serves them, awesome. That's, that's what I'm here for. So, um, I, I do, I, I have a lot of processes that are even every day that is like living in, in, you know, being clear with your energy. Like, you know, I believe the day starts the night before because whatever you go to bed on is soaking in your subconscious mind all night long. So if you in the day and you're like, oh, I should have done this and I have all these things to do or you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, I, I, my stomach or whatever, you literally go to bed with all that shit, you know, absorbing in your body saying, oh, this is what you want more of. Like, this is what you want to create. 
So mine's more like a uh, day to day things that I do to live in alignment. It's like I, I teach people the patterns and the operations of, you know, from of all their processes being in alignment. And then, you know, probably, I mean, there's in, in the beginning of some of my programs, I teach people how to see their unconscious commitments and then create the visioning process around it. So it's like, based on what your unconscious commitments are, how do we now align to a conscious commitment of who we are and then create the vision that feels good and matches versus we're saying something that our body's like, nah, it doesn't even like you just, you, it doesn't match. So my stuff is more like internal game processes to allow you to align to receiving that. So, you know, like I had mentioned to you before, I still to this day have never done one paid ad or target marketing. We're actually going to launch in January in 2018 when people see this. Maybe you will have seen an ad from me, but I've never done an ad, never done target marketing, never done anything but just used organic Facebook. And yet I have million dollar plus clients. So it goes to show you, I always say that it's not about the strategy. It's about the, it's about what you're vibrating. It's about your alignment. When you're aligned to receive, you're, you'll receive. They'll find you. Even, you know, I have like my clients from all over the world, some of the biggest businesses in the world that I even coach, and they don't even use Facebook and somehow they found me. And I'm not like online and da 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 da. Now I'm about to expand that to, to be able to share even more and receive even more. So my point being is that it, it's, I, I believe in, um, you know, looking at the process of, of daily alignment and you can then also have like, like, you know, I'll do quarterly heart mind mapping and just continue to shift things and evolve things. Uh, but I believe the vision, this is what I will say, the vision gets to match the frequency. So if you sit down and you make your new year's resolution goals and people do this, like I'm going to do this. And we know this, the statistics of the stuff, but it's like so incredibly low of the people actually stick with it and stay with it. And that's because there's a disconnect internally of allowing themselves to receive that. So I, I do more of like a weekly type thing where it's like, I'm clear on what I'm creating that week. And I, you know, it's like, and that's what I, when I'm connecting with my clients every week or on masterminds, et cetera, we're like, what are you practicing? What's the little inches that you're taking in these things? And we know where we're going. And sometimes it can shift and change to become even so much greater than we ever thought because we're focused on the micro alignment to get to the macro and receive the macro, but you can't receive the macro unless you're micro aligned to it. Yeah. That makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. And before we hop off, what are let's say three gold nuggets that you would like to share with the tribe that you just feel three like nuggets are like that, that they're coming through. Like this, this is something that <laughs> we really need <laughs> that yeah, we really well, need to touch on. Uh, well, I mean, I've touched, I've, I've talked about quite a bit of these things, but just what's coming through right now, if I can, well, this would be probably the number one thing that I could give anyone when I get asked a question, like, what's the, what's the, the thing that would completely change or if I, you know, cause all the things I do are so in depth. If I could give one piece of advice, it would be to fully love and accept everything you've ever been in, ever experienced, and everything you're in right now. It, I mean, because that's the vibe. And when you're in that vibration of love and acceptance, then you're willing to receive more. Like, and, and so if there's, like I mentioned before, if there's any shame, blame of anything on your past or any resistance energy in your life, that shows you where you get to put some, where you, what you get to heal, what to, you get to love within yourself so that you create love energy. But that's what it comes down to. It's like love and accept everything you've ever been in and everything you are now. And then you're back to love energy and creation energy. Um, so acceptance is huge. The other one that, you know, I just reaffirm from what we talked about is comparison is a thief of all joy. You're uniquely divine individual, perfect. And this always comes up, which is kind of around acceptance as well. It's just like, instead of running from, or I, I'd say surface self-empowerment very much is like have a limiting belief and try to run away from it and convince yourself you're the opposite. Like I said, how it's like, if you're like, I'm a loser, it's like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm this. It's like actually own and accept. Well, how, how have I ever been that? How have I ever had that trait? You know, do I, can I be that trait if I wanted to be? Cause I am all things. And then I can actually accept that I see it in other people because I see it in myself. And so there's acceptance around it to then go, and if I'm this and I'm all things, I'm also, I'm also all the beautiful things. I'm all things. So those are just three that kind of spin off. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that comes through me right now, especially with influencers. Ah, oh, this is okay. This is, this is something for influencers. Um, I want you to hear that you are worthy of having everything operating in high alignment, meaning like mm -hmm. everything does get to be awesome. There is no sacrifice. So a lot of times influencers are playing the either or game. Well, everybody, we live in a human society that plays the either or game. Either I can have this or this. Influencers, I still see, even though they're like the creators and they're kind of like the 1% that are, are creating something in, in a different space, they're still saying I can have my business, you know, if I sacrifice my body. 
if I sacrifice my love relationship a little bit, there's still this like either or game going on. And I want to say the next level of alignment and understanding is that there is no such thing as sacrifice. It simply is when you align to the divine being that you are and fully worthy. And I almost like, I want to say like activate the DNA within you that's been dormant and receive those codes and those frequencies of understanding. You wouldn't compromise anything and you don't have to settle or sacrifice anything. It actually just gets easier and easier and easier. Like I mentioned to you where you saw a video of me and my beloved, we were like just dancing in the kitchen and singing and cooking. And it was like, Oh, like, like I was like in the past, I mean, I still have a house manager and nanny. I pay for like support completely because I'm worthy of being supported. I would have never, I don't cook. Or, and I mean, I even have a couple cookbooks from back in the day with all my like body, mind mentor stuff. And yet you almost get to place. You're like, you're so open. You're, you're so worthy of time and flow. You won't want to like, there's space for that because you want to. And so it is just, it's like, it's allowing ourselves to receive more and it being even easier. Yes. Yes. So true. So true. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Marcy. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it was lots of fun. Thanks for having me. I hopefully that assisted, and and I'm happy to share those audios with you too. If you yeah, want to yeah, those. for sure, for sure. We'll we'll pass those along. Awesome. <laughs>